Hi there, and welcome to our video on the anatomy of the internal carotid artery. We'll be talking about the ICA in terms of seven different segments, a fairly typical way to understand its anatomy. Some of these segments have branches, and we can remember these with the mnemonic, calm voices make intraoperative sex pleasurable and almost memorable. Don't ask me where I got that mnemonic, but it works for me. Not all of these uh, segments have branches, but there are two coming from C2, two from C4, two from C6, and two from C7. So with that out of the way, let's begin by talking about C1, which is the cervical segment of the internal carotid. As you can imagine, it's the portion that travels alongside the cervical vertebrae, from the bifurcation of the common carotid, all the way up to its entrance into the skull, as you can see over here, through a hole in the temporal bone, which is called the carotid canal. This part of the temporal bone here, which we'll move inside the skull now to get a bit of a better look at. So this part of the temporal bone here is called the petrous portion of the temporal bone. And as the internal carotid comes through the carotid canal, it then passes through the petrous portion of the temporal bone. So that's C2, which is also called the petrous segment. So quite an intuitive name. And from C2, we have our first two branches of the ICA. That is the caracotympanic branch, which like a number of these branches isn't included in this model, unfortunately but which supplies the middle ear with arterial blood, passing posterolaterally from the internal carotid, carotid into the middle ear. The second branch from C2 is the Vidian artery, which passes through this little channel in the sphenoid bone, which is called the Vidian canal. So the Vidian artery departing here from the internal carotid through the Vidian canal. It anastomoses with the external carotid artery to, to form a sort of redundant passage of arterial blood in case one of the two gets blocked. C3, the third segment of the ICA, is called the lacerum segment because it comes through the foramen lacerum, which is this hole here, this foramen, made between the sphenoid, the occipital, and the temporal bones. So the lacerum segment of the internal carotid comes through that foramen lacerum. Now, C4 is known as the cavernous segment because it passes through the cavernous sinus, which is an intricate network of very fine veins uh, that sort of interface with the, the, the inside of the skull just here. So through the cavernous sinus, the cavernous segment of the internal carotid passes. And there are two branches from the cavernous segment. The first is the meningohypophyseal branch, which supplies the meninges, uh, the meninges which cover the clibus, that's this sloping segment of bone here, and also the tentorium cerebelli, which is a bit further down here, but is a, a flat surface of meninges that separates the cerebellum from the rest of the brain. The other thing that the meningohypophyseal hypoph supplies is the pituitary gland, which is sitting in this cella turcica here. The, the pituitary gland also gets called the hypophysis. So the meningohypophyseal branch supplies some meninges and part of the hypophysis. Next, we have I4 inferolateral trunk which again comes from the C4 segment and also supplies part of the tentorium cerebelli as well as part of the orbit, which is on the other side of this uh, superior orbital fissure just here. So that's C4, that's it for C4, which is the cavernous segment of the ICA. Next we have the clinoid segment, which is this curved little portion here just medial to the clinoid process, the anterior clinoid process of the sphenoid bone. 
That pointy part of the lesser wing of the sphenoid, that's the clinoid process. I hope you can see that there, the anterior clinoid process. And so this is the clinoid portion of the ICA. Ophthalmic portion being C6 has two branches, one of which is this ophthalmic artery here. Very important uh, artery passing through the optic canal to supply the orbit uh, and dividing into the supratrochlear artery and the dorsal nasal artery, which supplies some of the, the uh, more superficial part of the nose. Uh, next up, we have C7, which is the terminal segment, otherwise known as the communicating segment. And there are two more branches from that. There's the anterior choroidal which supplies some deep brain structures as well as the hippocampus and the amygdala and also the posterior communicating artery, which is the other branch of C7, which forms part of the circle of Willis connecting the ICA to the basilar artery and its branches. So now that we've discussed every segment or each of the seven segments of the ICA, we must uh, be ready for its termination. The termination of the ICA is to become the right middle, uh, sorry, the middle cerebral artery and the anterior cerebral artery. The middle cerebral artery supplies the lateral cerebral cortex, uh, as well as the anterior temporal lobes and insular cortices. And the anterior cerebral supplies the medial aspect of the cerebral hemispheres from all the way back to the parietal lobes. So that's it for the anatomy and the course of the internal carotid artery. Before we wrap up, let's talk about some interesting anatomical variants. For starters, we can have congenital absence of the ICA. We might have a retropharyngeal ICA, so passing behind the pharynx. We also have this interesting abnormality called kissing carotids, where if the internal carotid is that elongated and tortuous, the internal carotid on either side can actually join in the middle and effectively touch or kiss. And we'll leave it there for now. But thank you so much for, for joining us in this journey through the, uh, through the skull, following the path of the internal carotid artery. Join us in the next video to talk about the external carotid, which is not quite as convoluted uh, and doesn't have quite as many branches. So I look forward to seeing you in the next video.